Hey, what's going on AP World Peeps? We have video 17, Trade Routes and Technological and Maritime Innovations. This is such an important video. Make sure you understand the implications of these trade routes. All right, so let's start off talking about the Eurasian Silk Roads pictured here. So these connected large civilizations, pastoralists and agriculturalists throughout Eurasia. So we have this huge giant landmass here of Eurasia that is connected via the Silk Roads. Products were made for sale in distant markets. Please highlight or circle distant markets for me. It's very important to understand that people are making goods for other people living thousands of miles away. They're not making it just for themselves. Chinese silk in Rome was seen as a symbol of wealth and status, so it was in high demand in Rome. And most people would travel and trade only on specific parts of the roads. So for example, maybe you would only trade in this little area here. Most people did not travel the whole Silk Road. Rather, it was like a relay system where they would trade their goods to the next person in line to travel the next distance on the road. And when large states were powerful and provided security, the Silk Roads prospered. We see this under the Han Dynasty and in the 7th and 8th centuries in particular, which we'll talk about in the next period. Okay, so what were some goods that were traded? Well, from China, we have silk, gunpowder, paper, mirrors, Chinese women produced a significant amount of silk in their homes. They really were the makers of silk early on. From India, you have textiles, medicine, spices, and pepper. And from the Middle East, you have dates, nuts, dried fruit, and swords. Be able to identify different goods that are being traded from each region. And from the Mediterranean, you have gold, jewelry, perfume, and then olive oil, which is being made here by crushing olives and disease also spread on the silk roads we often think of goods that are transferred but sadly disease is going to transfer as well and spread which will cause a lot of death in major cities in constantinople this was a significant stop on the roads we're going to be talking about constantinople in two videos and it's very important for its location on the Silk Roads. Okay, so what were the impacts of the Silk Road on cultures? Well, Buddhism is going to spread from India to East Asia. And Sogdians, these were Central Asian people that will translate Buddhist texts to Chinese. So this will help spread Buddhism. And Buddhist merchants will build monasteries and temples throughout East Asia. And as Buddhism spread, it changed as well. So Mahayana Buddhists saw Buddha as a deity. So originally Buddha did not claim to be a deity, but the Mahayana Buddhists actually saw him as a deity. And some elements of Zoroastrianism were included in Buddhist practices, such as fire rituals that they practiced. Okay, Trans-Saharan caravel routes jumping over to Africa. These were in the early century CE is the introduction of the camel from Arabia. This is more favorable for desert travel than go 10 days without water and drink an obscene amount of gallons of water in just a couple minutes. So camels are very conducive for this dry, hot climate area. Goods that were traded on the Trans-Saharan caravan routes included ivory, nuts, slaves, gold, and salt. We'll talk about gold and salts in particular in the coming videos. Thousands of camels would travel at once with hundreds of people as well. And this linked West Africa with North Africa and Europe. So it really kind of connects different parts of Africa to trade. So new saddles for camels were invented that really helped with this trade. A saddle that went behind the hump meant it, it was easier to hold on to and ride. A saddle was also built that was on top of the hump. You can see this gentleman sitting here. This can allows the people to see better, especially while fighting. Um, in front of the hump allows for more control or better control of the camel. And then the final type of saddle that was created was one that is not for riding, but for carrying goods. And this allowed people to transport more goods. So be able to identify and explain one of these inventions, one of these new types of saddles for camels that increase trade. Okay, let's jump over to the Indian Ocean sea lanes. They stretch from Southern China to Eastern Africa. So we're looking from way over here all the way over to Eastern Africa here, quite a bit of distance. Costs were cheaper to ship than on the Silk Roads because ships had larger cargoes and they could trade more goods. It was actually cheaper. Therefore, what we're going to see is that sea lanes, Indian Ocean sea lanes, often had goods for mass market, while the Silk Roads, those were mostly luxury goods. Christianity is going to spread as well on the Indian Ocean sea lanes to southern India via merchants. And Islam will spread as well in the 7th century via merchants, which we'll talk about in period 3. So what allowed for this commerce? Well, monsoons, the understanding of these monsoons is very important. During the summer months, 
the winds blew northeast. During the winter months, they blew southwest. So people would time their travels along with these monsoons and have the wind aid them. Technology such as the astrolabe was very influential as well. It could help calculate latitude and the new ships such as junks, which allowed for better stability and better travel. All right, Mediterranean sea lanes. This connected the Silk Roads to Europe and Northern Africa. Byzantine Empire will flourish during this time due to trade and especially Constantinople's location. If you look at it, you can see it's just surrounded by water and it is a ma major stop for trade. So in addition to camels, following animals were used to help transport goods and be able to identify and explain the advantages of these animals. So the ox was used to pull heavy loads, but it moves slower than other animals. The horse is found in many areas of the world, could be used in battle. Um, the llama in particular is going to be used in the Americas and is, has really good traction for climbing mountains, but they cannot pull heavy loads. So depending on the region of the world you're in, the access to the animals and what you're transporting, you may use a camel or an ox or a horse or a llama. Be able to identify these different animals, please. Okay, we'll finish up with a quick recap. We have types of goods traded on roads and lanes, spread and changes to Buddhism via the Silk Roads. That's an example of syncretism. Advantages of camels and other animals and technology slash knowledge for seed lane trade. I actually will end with a short answer question. Answer all three of these parts. Part A, identify one religion that spread on the Silk Roads and explain how it changed as a spread. Part B, identify and explain one invention that allowed camels to be used on trans-Saharan trade routes. And ex part C, identify and explain how Indian Ocean traders adapted to their environment to conduct trade on the Indian Ocean Sea lanes. Thank you guys very much for watching. Look forward to seeing you back here for the last video of period number two. This is 18 spread of crops and their impacts. Best of luck as always. Thanks for watching and have a good day.